Hi guys and welcome to another video. So in this video we're going to talk about uh, should you learn TensorFlow or PyTorch. So let's get started uh, with this video. So I'm going to talk about uh, this video for a few minutes and so let's get right into it. So uh, there is uh, lots of frameworks for deep learning. TensorFlow obviously is one of the most famous uh, because it was on the uh, it was the first one to get lots of traction uh, in its first year. Fiano has been around for I think eight years. I think Fiano is from uh, 2011 or something. But TensorFlow was the first one to get mainstream uh, with um, because it was created from by Google and has lots of contributors and its repository is very known and stuff like that tensorflow it's very uh uh ahead in the game but there is also pytorch that was released in 2016 and it is starting to get more popular it's getting more um stars and github it's getting more developers people are migrating for from tensorflow to PyTorch, that's why TensorFlow now supports eager execution. I think I think the fact that PyTorch has dynamic graphs, uh, which we're going to talk about this uh, later on on this channel. If you guys are done to that, uh, you guys should subscribe to my channel so you receive uh, videos on that. So the fact that uh, PyTorch has dynamic graphs, which uh, are very good for uh, research um, TensorFlow now has eager execution and eager, eager execution will be first citizen on TensorFlow 2.0 which I think will be released in May or April um, later in this summer um, I think in the TensorFlow conference that will be I think in April or March, March, March is too early. I think May, probably May. So we probably see something about TensorFlow and eager execution uh, in May. Eager execution is something that is very interesting because it allows you to build pure, uh, let's say, neural networks, uh, something like that, because. You don't need to specify a graph, you just run the code and it's very good for research, as I said before, because you don't need you don't need to care or worry about graphs. And TensorFlow it's um it uses uh, static graphs, which means that you define a graph and you fit data to that graph. So that approach is very good for scalability because it allows you to scale a project or model across multiple devices such as clusters or multiple GPUs but um, the downside is that you need more time writing code because you need to to do a lot of stuff that you don't really want to do uh, create a graph and then fit data and create dictionary to fit data it's very annoying uh, if, you do, if you have to do that uh, lots of time it's get it gets very annoying and it it's add up um, with time because you need to yeah just uh, how can I say that's just something that I don't really enjoy that's why I I like TensorFlow but I don't like TensorFlow for TensorFlow uh, I like TensorFlow because it's, it's speed so most of my projects, I don't mainly use um, TensorFlow. I use Keras um, because uh, have to deal with graphs. It's such a bottleneck. It, it, Keras has its um, own issues. One of them is speed because TensorFlow code runs faster than Keras code. Uh, now, I'm, I, I didn't benchmark uh, Keras and TF.Keras 
uh, one or another because I, I didn't have the time to, but I will do that and I'm gonna see if TF the Keras is faster than Keras itself. But Keras, um, the, the Keras library, not TF, TF the Keras, it's, it's kind of confusing, but Keras allows you to use multiple deep learning frameworks. Um, there is TensorFlow, of course, there is CNTK, MXNet, and Fiano. So Kara has has a lot of advantages uh, in that regard. Uh, uh, so, okay, so let me see what I'm gonna talk about next. So we have uh, PyTorch, as I said before. And PyTorch was developed from, I think, um, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook did at least one good thing, uh, which was PyTorch. So, okay, so uh, TensorFlow, uh, actually, excuse me, PyTorch uh, is an open source deployment platform that provides seamless path from research prototype to production deployment. So, um, the first version of PyTorch wasn't very good for production because it has didn't have good support for uh, distributed training, which is a must have to deep learning. Uh, we're gonna talk about that. Uh, fortunately, my hardware is not that good, so I cannot talk much about that. But if you have, uh, I don't know, if you are into GPU mining, if you have lots of GPUs that you use to mine Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency, you can use that those GPUs to train in a, like a cat classifier or something. So uh, PyTorch has dynamic graphs, which are very, very good. And the API is cleaner than TensorFlow. TensorFlow uh, code is very read, it's very hard to read because it doesn't, it doesn't feel like uh, you are doing uh, machine learning. It feels like you are doing a obscure thing that you don't even understand some of the math. Uh, actually, some of the code because the math it's 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 where if you just if you are a researcher, PyTorch is better for you because you don't have to worry about uh, minor details such as setting up a graph and setting up the the operations to run the the ops. So PyTorch does that automatically. So it's a very good thing, a very good con on PyTorch side. So, uh, with regards to speed, uh, I think they both have similar speed. Some benchmarks shows that PyTorch is faster. I don't know uh, if that is the case for every model, but PyTorch has a very clean API. So, if you guys see um, a example, for example, a NEMNIST example on both frameworks, PyTorch codes feels so natural that it's it's beyond uh, my words. I don't have words to, to say that because it's it feels like math. You know, it's just uh, the 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 layers they are all uh, one upon another and they feel so natural. The fourth function that most models on PyTorch um, use um, which we call a class. So you build a class you inherit from the nn.module and you build your entire network on that uh, class. In TensorFlow, you could use a functional approach. Approach You can uh, use a object-oriented approach. Uh, you could use a... Uh, I don't know if there is another. Yeah, this is just a functional and the, the object-oriented approach. Okay, so I have been talking a lot about this. I hope you guys have made up your minds. I, I, I advise you guys to try both of them. But if you are starting out with deep learning, just go with PyTorch. If you have to choose between TensorFlow and PyTorch, go with PyTorch. But if you are, um, there is another discussion that we're gonna make. Is between PyTorch and Keras. Um, that's the the game that I, I want to see because TensorFlow 
because uh, yeah, it's very hard to explain it. Because keras in one way is Tensorflow, but you're not using um, Tensorflow APIs. I think Tensorflow, the problem of Tensorflow is it's, it's API, not the framework. Because the framework is awesome, but the APIs are very hard. So it's unreachable for most researchers, uh, unfortunately, because it's very hard to to put the effort. So PyTorch comes with a strong, um, strong, uh, in clean API. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoy. See you guys next time.